An Inspiration Guide to Chapter 1 Are Motivation and Inspiration Natural or Can You Get Some From Outside Sources? Why do I either laugh at all this self-help slash life coach slash success stuff, have contempt for it or think it's boring? If you need to constantly read other people's crap or watch motivational videos on YouTube, you have nothing solid inside of you. Enlightened people live inspired all the time. Even when I rest, I know that I'll turn it on whenever I want. Rest is a part of the ebb and flow of a great life. You can't be a bolt of energy all the time as though your finger was stuck in an electrical outlet. I remember watching a few people on TV acting like energetic bundles of joy. I remember Richard Simmons with his losing weight stuff. That was all a performance. Nobody is bouncy and perky all the time. That's all phony shit. Naturally inspired people simply live by their souls given by God. I don't act bouncy and perky but I can do hard things anytime I want. Get this idea out of your head that there are professional experts somewhere who know more about human life than you, especially about your life like all those psychologists, psychiatrists, self-help coaches, life coaches, therapists, etc. They're either boobs who took a bunch of meaningless courses in college that do not give a person insight into human behavior or narcissistic egomaniacs who pretend they know something deep and advanced about the human condition just like which doctors and shamans of the past did. Every human being is a loner in their own mind, universes apart from everyone else. Because of this fact alone, there cannot be anywhere near a science of human behavior. It's massive fraud. The funny thing is that almost everyone falls for it, this idea that a so-called psychologist or psychiatrist knows something deep that you don't know about life. It's the Wizard of Oz thing, the phony hiding behind the curtain pretending he's big and bad. Everything is within yourself. The more you subscribe to the world's bullshit, including all that crap in college called the social sciences, the humanities, or the liberal arts, the less your life is about you. You got all these nerds who have read thousands of books and you see them on TV sitting in front of a bookshelf full of books, acting smart. The smart person knows there is some objective knowledge as in math, science, and grammar but everything else is a bunch of boobs trying to tell you something that might be different than what you feel within yourself. I'm 60 years old as I write this. I spent my entire life being naturally inspired. I do hard things all the time mostly physical, some creative. The easiest personal test in the world is to do something that's hard to you. That's the easiest way to earn self-respect like I talk about in my book A Free Spirit's Search for Enlightenment. Discover your true nature, what you were born to do that's good, positive, exhilarating. Have the guts to live by it. Feel your natural intuitive standard of life. Monitor yourself by releasing a good load of natural energy most days, except for rest days, this makes you feel really good and earns you loads of self-respect. Screw everybody else with their bullshit. When I'm doing hard stuff like swimming hard or working out hard, I'm not listening to YouTube inspiration tapes in my mind or on my MP3 gadget made by others. I usually listen to alternative type ideas or stories or music when I'm walking around. I let my mind wander sometimes. Sometimes I think about things I like. Sometimes I push with rah-rah stuff but not much. I just do. I've been doing it for so long. I don't need a mental psyche up to do a long swim. If I told you how long I swim for, you wouldn't believe me. It doesn't matter. The point is that for me, I don't need other people's bullshit to pump me up or get me excited about my life as Dr. Phil used to say in the intro to his show which they got rid of probably because it was so corny, this corny fat, ugly, bald head guy acting like fathers knows best like he's the man. I listened to a number of YouTube channels as I created parts of this book. I find this stuff really boring, a bunch of know-it-alls pretending they got the great advanced idea of life. Some of them have corny music in the background implying greatness. There's nothing more advanced than knowing your true nature and living by it. By tomorrow morning, it's all gone. When I get out of bed to do something, it's all me. 
I don't need or have some life coach video or mp3 beside me to urge me on. I venture to think there are at least a million know-it-all YouTube channels in these areas. Motivation Inspiration Success Self-help Creativity enhancement Intellectual stimulation Psychology Mental health The monosphere Dating and love coaches Etc, etc. This kind of stuff is like a broken recode to me because all my life, I've always done my own thing. I had the arrogance even at a young age to know I'm right and I don't give a shit about the rest of the world. I got slightly brainwashed at military college to be a capitalist ambition clone but in the end I had to be who I am in my true nature. That was the whole thrust of life, be me, be comfortable in my own skin. I don't need external stuff to motivate me. I'm always naturally inspired because I live by my soul aka true nature. To me, professional sports is a bunch of overpaid, arrogant young pewinks. I remember seeing one of these videos with that guy Ronaldo who was accused of rape and probably beat it because he's got money. The video was about him talking, making one-liners and there was grand classical music in the background. It was so stupid. Who gives a shit about punks chasing a ball around? Real greatness is people who actually help people or animals in a humble way without asking much in return. I heard most of the videos on YouTube's Motiversity, Be Inspired, Video Advice and Fearless Soul channels. To me, most of these people are blowhards. They think they're really smart and they're spouting off this garbage for their own egos, not because they really care about helping people. There are a lot of vain people who need an audience and like to hear themselves talk. I remember watching the biography of Samuel Clemens aka Mark Twain. He used to walk up and down the streets looking for attention. The truly enlightened person just does their own thing. They don't care what the outside world says either way including compliments. I'm not totally down on this stuff. It's better to listen to this stuff than to play a video game or what's a stupid TV show. If somebody is really down and out, they might need something to give them a sense of hope. I like the way I was brought up. If you're down and out, there's always God, some good churches, the Salvation Army and Pacific Garden Mission at Unshackled.org. I've read testimonials of people who have taken the Tony Robbins workshops. Either they're really brainwashed at that moment or he really helps them in some way. There are a lot of weak, lost souls not as enlightened as I am. Once you're enlightened, it's hard to see life from an unenlightened POV. I just see human weakness. In the end, the only truly cool people are the people who know their own purity, realize they have to live in the world to make money but do not have to sell their souls to it. 1 John 2 15-17 New International Version, NIV 15 Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father A is not in them. 16 For everything in the world the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life comes not from the Father but from the world. 17 The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Romans 12 2 New International Version, NIV 2 Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. 1 Corinthians 9 19-23 New International Version, NIV 19 Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone, to win as many as possible. 20 To the Jews I became like a Jew, to win the Jews. To those under the law I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. 21 To those not having the law I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law but am under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. 22 To the weak I became weak, to win the weak. I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. 23 I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. Chapter 2 a common sense wisdom guide. There has to be joy in what you do. 
setting goals then working at them like a robot is a horrible, artificial way to live. There has to be joy in what you do. Live simply. Don't try to be a self-help robot. Let go of goal setting, let go of what people are telling you to do. Be yourself. Success, happiness, and fulfillment are a state of mind. If you want to get the most out of life, don't waste time on trivial pursuits. Don't watch frivolous junk on a screen much. Ways in which people waste their lives. Greedy activities. Dedication to useless tasks. Drinking and drugs. Laziness. Worry what others think of you. Helping thankless people. Pursuing others' people money, making others rich. Having no clear direction. Poor is the man not able to unshackle the chains of his conditioning. Don't be nostalgic much. Don't be lazy today. Don't dream about tomorrow. Do you exist or live a full life? Don't live without intensity or pleasure to avoid weeping over days that will never come again. The secret is to work hard at what you love to do. Do the important stuff first. Multitasking is a myth. You can't do two things at once. Focus on one thing to do it well. Discipline should be easy because you're doing things you want to do. Do what you like that earns money. That's it. Be active. Don't be lazy or waste time doing frivolous and useless things. Do things other people shy away from. Be bold. If you lose at least you tried and learned something. You're either a spectator or a doer. Take risks in order to want to live the life you want. Try new things and see where it goes. Our purpose in this life is to recognize the Creator, to be grateful to Him, to try to do something useful with our lives. Just let life flow. You don't need self-help books with lists and BS. Just go and do. Start saving money and learn how to invest wisely. Everything is common sense. Be yourself. Set your own standards. Only do what makes you feel good and earns you money. Peace of mind is important. Motivation is a sense of hope and strength for achieving a good life. Pick something you like and are good at and stick with that. Follow your dream, get the necessary training and credentials. Henry David Thoreau's Walden, 1854 Tired of Modern Society Even in Those Primitive Times You can find the audiobook of Walden at YouTube Walden, full audiobook, or LibriVox.org. He was talking about men selling their souls to modern society even back then. He said men are not building their own houses anymore. They are working for others. He implied be your own man. Do what you want freely. Earn your money and sustenance through your own efforts without being subservient to others. He wanted to live the simple, natural life. According to en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash Henry underscore David underscore Thoreau, he died in 1862 at 44 of tuberculosis. He understood that once money goes beyond material comfort to luxury, it destroys people's lives. Most of the luxuries and many of the so-called comforts of life are not only not indispensable, but positive hindrances to the elevation of mankind. YouTube.com, Mark Pascio Streetwise Morality Hails Common Sense Over Psychobabble It's a good video. There are people who passed this matrix we live under. Chapter 3 Motivation Ideas Guide Be me, be comfortable in my own skin. The world starts to brainwash you when you get first consciousness starting at about two years old with family, church, TV, school, friends, etc. They want you to fall in love with one person, get married, and have kids but what if you're horny all the time like most men are? They want you to get a job or start a business, pay taxes, and buy stuff. What if you want to do your own thing? Many young people go through this quandary. It comes down to money which makes most people wage slaves. You can't do your own thing without money so you take some stupid job for money and your soul wilts. It doesn't die. It's still in there covered over by the stuff of the world. Do you have the courage to live being who you are? I say no for the vast majority of people. 
probably the two biggest rules of success, work hard, help others get what they want. I wrote a book about capitalist ambitious success called Success Self-Help Super Book, Be Who You Really Are which is about making money, getting rich, setting goals and working on them day by day in a Spartan way to reach your vision of success. Ultimately these are society's definitions of success. True success is doing what you want all the time. I'm not rich. I have enough money for modest comfort. That's all I need because my happiness comes from doing things. If you want success in the capitalist world, I suggest you go on money.com and forbes.com then maybe get my money and business books. I've seen this phenomenon in many young people and many immigrants from poor countries. It's like work, work, work for success. Work for what? What value do bigger houses, cars, and meaningless stuff have beyond their original function of basic shelter and transportation? I've studied success all the way back to Wallace D. Wattles in 1910. I watched the Chris Angel magician shows when they were on A&E where he revealed the secret of success. Everybody says the same thing. There is no secret or gimmick. Number one is hard work. Number two is intelligent hard work. Don't pick a field where there isn't much money. Look at the trending business fields that are up and coming. Pick something from there or pick something that everybody always needs like food and gas for cars. Many, many smart people are not people-oriented people. The people who know how to deal with people and make them feel at ease are the successful ones. Dale Carnegie's book How to Win Friends and Influence People, yourcoach.be slash blog slash wp hyphen content slash upload slash 2014 slash 02 slash dale hyphen carnegie hyphen how hyphen to hyphen win hyphen friends hyphen and hyphen influence hyphen people dot pdf is simply about acting interested in the other person even if you're insincere about it i used to watch classic old movies several times i saw them say the same thing Nobody gives a crap about you unless you can be useful to them. That's the lesson. Old man Robert Schuller of the bankrupt Crystal Cathedral wrote several Christian self-help books that were all about one thing. Fill a need. Help people solve a real problem and you'll make money. Don't waste time trying to be a musician or an artist. Look for something practical that helps people. The best teacher is real life experience. We're brainwashed to go to school then college. The lie is that all that crap called the social sciences teaches you something about life, about yourself. How to treat other people. Romantic love. God. It's all someone else's bullshit. Think your own thoughts. If you really want to learn about people, do what I did. At 17, I left my comfortable family home to go to a military college made up of 400 plus guys, most of them really screwed up and brainwashed by the system like I was at that time. I learned the biggest lesson of all, everyone is screwed up but me. I can listen and laugh with anyone but my only allegiance to my soul. Although psychology textbooks and cute articles in all those social science journals all together amount to a rat's ass in true insight into life. It's simply a bunch of delusional academic bullshit. Read my mental health book. A real teacher of life teaches what they do every day. A fake teacher is someone teaching out of a book. Your greatest teacher is your last mistake. The Law of Mind in Action by Fenwick L. Holmes, 1919 from globalgreybooks.com slash law hyphen of hyphen mind hyphen in hyphen action hyphen ebook.html. Here is the table of contents. Metaphysical Institute Realization Introduction Method of Reading and Study of the Law of Mind in Action Part 1 Lesson I Metaphysics What It Is and Does Lesson 2 The One Law We Need to Know Lesson 3 How to Use the Law The Silence Lesson 4 Spirit Lesson V Creative Mind in the Individual Lesson 6 Creative Mind in the Universal Lesson 7 Man, Master on the Planet Lesson 8 Matter, or Thought in Form Lesson 9 The Creative Word Lesson X 
the outer and the inner universe. Lesson 11. The Infinite Self. Lesson 12. The Law of Attraction and Appropriation. Lesson 13. Choosing the law you will live under. Lesson 14. Feeling and Emotions. Lesson 15. The Instinct to Create. Lesson 16. Our Immaculate Conceptions. Lesson 17. Intensified Consciousness. Lesson 18. Is Evil a Power? Lesson 19. The Thing I Fear. Lesson XX. Nothing Matters. Lesson XXI. Courage Regained. Lesson XXII. Creative Imagination. Lesson XXIII. One Pointedness. Lesson XXIV. Faith, an attitude of mind. Lesson XXV. Mental poise. Lesson XXVI. The will to win and prosperity. Lesson XXVII. Creating atmospheres and prosperity. Lesson XXVIII. The personal spirit. Lesson XXIX. Intuition and ideation. Lesson Triple X. Ultimate Reality and the Fatherhood of God. Lesson XXXI. The Supreme Affirmation. Part 2. Lesson I. The Use of Formulas. Lesson 2. The Healing Power or How to Help Others. Lesson 3. Whom to Treat. Lesson 4. How Long to Treat and How Often. Lesson V. What Kind of Cases to Be Treated. My Good Night Prayer. The lesson is that God is the ultimate giver of life including your life. God is creative spirit everywhere present, eternally here. In him is all life, goodness, holiness, and truth. Live for the glorification of God. Do everything for his glory. Do good things to help others and the blessings or karma come back to you. This is the real law of attraction. Be good and help others and they, in turn, help you. I think this works to a limited extent because many people are evil, selfish pigs. Give them an inch, they take a mile. If you're too kind and compassionate, people see you as weak person and exploit you for what they can get. Don't buy anybody's bullshit, not that secret, law of attraction lie that's going around big time. It's not really a law. The real law is that you're a good person and you do good things for your own nobility from your soul given by God. People recognize your hard work and reward you. You don't have to go around trying to be nice to people you don't like or evil people. Just decide on what you're good at that's productive and do it. Personally, I try to avoid people because I'm very cynical after living 60 years on this planet. I act nice and all that but I don't trust anyone. You have to live in the world and earn a living but you do not have to be of it. You don't have to buy into all that crap on TV like the supposed cool people there. In the end, you die and either go to heaven or hell. Live a quiet life true to yourself. Use your energy to do something positive. Stay away from people you don't like in order to avoid fights. You can't love your neighbor as yourself as it says in Mark 12:31. It's impossible. Anyone that pretends to is a liar. It goes against a human's true nature so simply stay away from people you don't particularly like in order to avoid trouble. It is not you that does the works but God dwelling in you. The Holy Spirit is creative and makes all things. Let God's Spirit release the good in you. I am at one with God. I am at one with all in highest friendship. I am at peace with the world. I am free from struggle. I am free from sense of fear. I have closed my eyes to the darkness. I see the light. I recognize the good, the beautiful, and the true. I am whole. I give thee thanks for all things. I am not afraid. I rest in God. Nothing can come to me but good. I trust the protecting power of divine love. I set my mind on high things. I live on the thoughts of faith and peace. I am afraid of nothing. I am full of peace. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I give thanks for the love of God. 
With God all things are possible. He leteth me beside the still waters. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Though I pass through the valley of the shadow thou art with me. When ye pray, believe ye have received and ye shall receive. Unleash fear and worry and haste and let them go. Rather the simple, happy life of moderate circumstances than trying to be rich. He who seeks shall find. The spirit passes through us into expression. Health springs forth from my inner being. All the ills of life are due to inharmony. God forgives all mistakes. I rest in divine satisfaction and infinite peace. I will be square with all men. I will rise above my weakness. I fear nothing nor anyone. I am bound to be happy now. I feel no resentment against anyone. I rise to new heights. I go on in a new and conscious freedom. I am full of joy and peace. My whole body is full of light and health. I am carefree. I am enjoying my rest now. I am conscious of inner wisdom and its power. I talk with God. I enter the timeless chambers of my soul. Joy thrills through my soul for the Father and I are one. Let me now act wisely. Let all my affairs be made smooth and harmonious. Let all my business arrangements fall into line with prosperity. Life fills me to overflowing. Life is good. My vision is growing brighter day by day. I and the Father are one. The master key to life is unity. The future has many wonderful things in store. I rest today in quiet peace. I am free from sense of guilt and fault. I act wisely. I am filled with joy in my prosperity. I am filled with great joy. I forgive myself. This light is God in my own soul. To have clean hands and a pure heart and a conscience devoid of offense to God and man. Be modest. A Good Night Prayer by Fenwick L. Holmes, 1919 Now let me sleep. In peace I lay me down as draws the day to close. Good day or ill, no more it vexes thought than when at mom I rose. Now on the breast of night once more I lie. As when a child I lay close in the warm embrace of mother love, worn with the hours of play. I rest and breathe a prayer to God tonight. And feel his presence near. Whose power is great, whose wings o air shadow me. And guard my heart from fear. Dark though the night, I closer press to God. He sees beyond the dark. And knows the good that yonder lies for me. He hears the morning lark. So let me sink to rest in dreamless sleep. Flee, cares, to shadows dim. My soul shall find its peace in God and wake from sleep to joy in Him. Chapter 4 Some Pearls of Wisdom Characteristics of an Educated or Wise Person I got some of these ideas from daringtolivefully.com slash educated hyphen person. The first rule is to look at everything that's not objective knowledge as potentially someone else's bullshit. Trust what you think within your own soul. If you need to learn a skill, by all means, learn from others but everyone is a loner which means that no one can develop any rules or science of human behavior yet we have a world full of self-help and psychology experts which is all bullshit to me. I'm enlightened because of my ability to know that much of the world's knowledge is someone else's bullshit. I don't buy into it. I don't need a shaman, a witch doctor, a priest, therapist, etc. The ability to think clearly and independently. Depth of knowledge. Good judgment. Strong willpower. See connections among ideas. Capacity to endure and persevere. Knows how to learn. Know myself. Know how to make decisions. Know how to focus their attention. Ability to take initiative and work alone. My own personal nobility. Ability to conceptualize and solve problems. Discipline to constantly improve. Knows about the world. Ability to communicate thoughts clearly and concisely. Generate ideas. Creative. Natural curiosity. Cooperate when necessary. Speak clearly. Doesn't do self-destructive things. Able to talk to others, make people feel at ease with you. 
Life in Proper Balance Holistic Spiritual Aesthetic Viewpoint Admit Shortcomings and Mistakes to Self Some Arithmetic Reason Analytically and Critically Productive Use of Knowledge Knows About Money Financial Literacy Knows How to Deal with Change Distinguish Between Relevant and BS Explore Alternative Viewpoints Explore Multiple Perspectives Aesthetic Appreciation Doesn't Blindly Accept, Go See for Themselves Tries to Be Happy and Successful Questions Many Things Pursue Lifelong Learning Can Discern Truth Have a Good Overview of the World's Knowledge Recognizes the importance of here and now. Seeks to see things as they really are. Appreciation of beauty and toughness. Wisdom from William Clement Stone's book The Success System That Never Fails. Daring Tolifully.com slash wisdom hyphen from hyphen w hyphen Clement hyphen Stone. Action. Are you on the right course to get from where you are now to where you really want to be? Select the right thoughts. Engage in the proper activity and choose the proper environment. What the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. Start for a specific destination and keep going. Sell a necessity that is low in cost and repeats. The fortune is made in the repeat business. Every disadvantage has an equivalent advantage. Are the things around you helping you toward success, or are they holding you back? Wealth is created through positive mental attitude, education, labor. Constantly strive to make the world a better place for yourself and for others. Do it now. Develop know-how skills that consistently get results for you. A positive mental attitude is the right mental attitude. Faith, integrity, hope, optimism, courage, initiative, generosity, tolerance, tact, kindliness and good common sense. Avoid situations and associates who tend to hold you back. Check your habits of thought and action. I knew what I was looking for. I wanted to develop a system that never fails. Say the right thing, in the right way, to get the right reaction. I learned from experience what to say and how to say it. Intelligence is using knowledge rather than merely having it. Intelligence is the power of meeting any situation successfully by proper behavior adjustments. Continue the momentum. Know-how is acquired through experience. Learn from trial and error trial and success. Reduce to a formula the principles you learn. Selling is persuading another person to accept your service, your product, or your idea. In this sense, everyone is a salesman. Success is achieved by those who try. Know exactly what your problem, goal, or desire is. When you do something, put your heart into it. 